And uh, Maggie, can we talk a little bit now? We've been talking a bit about, about show business, about something that John was talking about earlier, about the whole business of, of preservation and this sort of thing. Is it something that, that concerns you too? I mean, are you basically on Sir John's side and what he says about this? Hmm? Yes, I am. I, 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 I see the problem in another way because I have two brothers and they're both architects and they say, but if we go on keeping things standing, uh, what else can we build? I suppose really our problem here is that we are just a small island. Mm. But the examples of planning light that you do see, things like the dreadfulness of the Elephant and Castle, which used to be a place of humanity and warmth uh -huh. and people, which is now just a concrete desert yes. and a mess and an absolute disgrace. Yes. And what they've turned the Eastern Centre into is the same thing, just a, just a blight. Frightful. And this sort of thing is I really an absolute disgrace. Moreover, any world. government, What's well, exactly, that? I mean, any government, and it was the Labour government, I believe, which had the power, could have, could have, yes, could have, could have turned the whole thing into flats for people, left the whole thing standing empty all the time. It was a national scandal, did nothing about it at all. The Office Development Permit, was introduced by, by um, who was a man, um, the Lord, um, you know, the man that was Foreign Secretary, who was he under the Labour government, government administration? Oh, he introduced uh, the, 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 Brown, uh, George Brown. George Brown. Yes, he introduced the office development uh, prohibition, you know, he stopped offices being built, but only in the last two years of the government, when it should have been done miles before yeah. the first act of, our, of a socialist government, a government which says it's socialist, the first act they should make, is to stop all that and say, homes, homes, the most important thing, makes me sick when I read all this crap about, oh, let's have a youth club, <laughs> let's have a theatre built, or let's have something else built. No good or that. Cultural activity is no good if there's no home to go to, is it? Absolutely true. You must have a home. Yes. So the first and requisite is a home. possible on the ground. Well, I was going to say... <laughs> Yes. Mm. It really makes me very angry. Doesn't it you to pass a great thing empty, a great skyscraper mm. empty? Right. I absolutely I think it's an absolute right. scandal. Absolutely. And yet they can all get worked up over a, a couple of pounds in, in their pay packet or something and go on strike. Why can't they have... Why can't... I mean, if unions really care, if they're really socialistic and say we care about our fellow man, why can't they force, why can't they march about something like that? Instead of another pound yes, but for that, themselves, but why not a few pounds for somebody else who's really hard up? But that's not the what? union's problem. <laughs> It's not the union's fault. That, that, that yes, condition. look, what is that the condition. statue outside the TUC? Have you looked at that statue? <laughs> the statue outside the TUC depicts a man helping, doesn't it? He's helping up another man who's on the ground. Yes. And that statue symbolises what the TUC stands for, doesn't it? Of course. Right, well, when a union does something like jeopardising the work of their fellow men, if you stop trains, people can't get to their work, can they? Can they? They can't get to work even. So in doing what you want for yourself, you're jeopardizing your fellow men, aren't you? Yes. Well, why can't you act in concert with your fellow men? Why do you have to do something which endangers the livelihood of your fellow men? When that statue represents exactly that, helping, because it not might, hindering. Because it might be that the fellow, um, that one fellow, to take two workers at one fellow, is a lot worse off than the other worker. They're not all equal, are they? I mean, if they were all equal, there'd be no problem. Precisely, but it comes down to a question of morality. You don't no, just no. work for another pound. When I took my job at £3.10 a week, ASM in small parts, I come out of the army, 47, that's what I got. 47, or £3.10 a week, and the digs were 25 bob all in. And the rest, I had the soap and the fags, you know. And <laughs> with the opposite of our picture shoved round the bend, because I did the own cleaning. <laughs> but I saved, and because I wanted to do the job and wanted to do it well, I got on, I got another rep fortnightly, and then after that I got monthly rep, you know, and I got a bit better. I did seven years in the provinces before I came to London. And I think if you're prepared to do that kind of thing, you're doing it, what are you doing it for? You're not saying I want another pound all the time, you're saying I want to do the work better. Yes, but now, that was the kind of morality I was brought up with. But, but, you don't do a job just for what you get, you do the job because but, but, you want to do it well. Oh, but Kenneth, can I say I think that's crap? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, I really... I've never been so insulted. <laughs> uh, can I... Who signed you on? <laughs> You see, it's all very well you saying that. It's all very well all of us here in jobs that are creative, where you can see if you go work, you've got a talent, you can get to the top, and you can get, you know, handsome living. Now, you're not going to tell me that you are going to be compared with somebody who's sticking door handles on a car for, 20, for, 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 for 10 hours a day, five days a week, that, that, that he's not going to get frustrated, that he doesn't deserve an extra quid if he wants one? Of course his, his work, work ethic is money. It's got to be. He doesn't get the satisfaction from the job that we get. I mean, that's true. You of course, are talking. It's true. You talk. I, 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 
Of course he's it's true. His, his inference is the man who's sitting the doorknobs on has got a job that's monotonous and dreary. Absolutely. What do you think doing something night after night? I've done this play now at the Globe. I mean, I've said it so many times, I'm beginning to wonder what it means, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you keep on saying anything long enough and you begin to think you're daft, don't you? I mean, uh, that's the trouble. I mean, do, everybody does seem to think that our work is glamorous. It's fabulous. They're fabulously glamorous. It's not at all. It's a simple business of self-discipline and going on night after night and doing it as well as you can. Right, and if I have to stick right. doorknobs on, and I've done it, yes. I've stuck doorknobs on, I've painted my own walls right. when I haven't got the money to employ a decorator, I'll do it because I like doing it and I want to do it well. But the other difference is, Kenneth, that the guy who goes on strike is not earning your salary. He's not earning four or five hundred a week. What about the period I didn't oh, have I any success sure. and I spent, what, seven years in the provinces bumming around? That wasn't very successful. No, of course not. But there was always, there was always because you backed your talent, because your talent went in, a, in, in, in an area where talent pays off in the end, then you had a horizon. You could see ahead. Well, what are you asking for? A world where every single job leads to some marvellous end? Yes. Well, all yes. jobs can't be like that. Well, pr precisely. That, and that's the problem. But nevertheless... I mean, so therefore you must, you must allow people their frustrations. No, you, they must accept their limitations, surely. We don't oh, 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 come on. They must be allowed to... This is, uh, that, no, that, 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 that's a Superman argument. It isn't. Uh, Voltaire said every man must dig in his own bit of garden. There wasn't much wrong with Voltaire's philosophy, was there? No. Sir John, <laughs> could we have a calm word? Because Kenneth and I are getting rather excited. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> <laughs> By the way, do you know what they, you know what they say his last words were, Walter? No. They said, but apparently a priest came and they said, you know, will you now, will you now make your peace and renounce the devil? Renounce the devil and all his works. And he said, oh, it's a bit late in the day to be making enemies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sir John, were you going to say something? Um, about... I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't blame you at all. I don't blame you at all. Poetry. Let's talk about poetry.